Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Bless the Lord. And forget, not, forget nothing that you be doing in your life in this time. Today is day six of the fast and And we all know what number six means. Six is the number of man. Yes. Because on the sixth day, God created man. <laughs> God made man. Hallelujah. So today represents the number of man in the fast, and number six. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm encouraging you this morning to grab your Bible because we will read what it says about what we should do and how we should operate here on earth according to the word of God. According to the word of God. Jesus, it is well with our soul. Somebody open your mouth and bless God. Be in the spirit, people of God. Be in the spirit. Somebody said there is no time like the present. God want to do a new thing in our life, in our midst. But we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. 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 Good morning, Sister Christine. Welcome, Sister Audrey. Hallelujah. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Sister Debbie, Sister Saskia, Sister Keisha, Sister Jackie, Sister Michelle Chambers, Sister Sidani Stephen, welcome. Stevenson, Tia Mack, my brother Darren Wade, Sister Angela Mitchell, Sister Alicia Clark, 
Good morning, Sister Persia Mabir, Sister Pauline Gordon, Sister Nelson and Samuda. Welcome. God bless you. I'm calling your name. I want the devil to know that you are here to pray because your prayer is going to silence the enemy. Sister Janetta. Good morning, Sister Sonia, Sister Denise Gray, Sister Gracia Smith, Sister Christine Kennedy, Sister Dorrit Jackson, Sister Raquel Burke. Good morning, Sister Vinet Samuels, Evangelist Saunders and family. Welcome. Welcome. God bless you. Happy Wednesday morning. Yes, to you. Happy Wednesday. It is well. We thank God for his goodness and his mercies upon our life. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We thank him. He alone is worthy of all our praise. No man on earth is worthy of our praise. The Bible reminds us that all praise belongs to God, not man. It all belongs to God. So let us give him praise. Let us give him thanks. Let us give him thanks. The Bible said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord because he is good. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We worship you. We magnify you. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. As much as to wake us up this morning, Lord, we give you praise and we thank you. You are good, Lord. You have made us promises that has not come to pass yet. And we will live to see the day that the, all the things that you have said about our life will come to pass. Lord, we praise you and we adore your name. It is well with our souls. Thank you, Jesus. My God, many people were not able to get out of bed this morning because their number was called, their time expired. But we are here and we give you thanks, Lord. We are here and you are here in our midst and we worship you. We just want to lift our voice to you this morning. We just want to lift up our vocal cord to you this morning, oh God, to bless it. Bless our vocal cord so we can continue to worship you, so we can continue to magnify you, so we can continue to give your praises, we can continue to sing psalms. Hallelujah, Jesus, my God. Many were not able to turn this morning. Many people received the news this morning. I'm sorry he didn't make it, or I'm sorry she didn't make it, but we are here. We are here walking on top of our grave. And Lord, we are dancing in the spirit. We are glorifying your holy name. We magnify you this morning for life. You have given us life. You have given us another chance, mighty God, to make it right. This is the day you have given us, Lord God. You have given us another chance to make it right, to get it right with you, Lord. And we praise your name. We lift you up on high. Oh God, we lift you on high. You are lifted up this morning. We exalt your name. We shabak your name. Thank you, Jesus. If it hadn't been for you, it wouldn't be here. So we praise you. We adore you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Our children are safe. They are safe in your arms. Our family, mighty God, they are safe. Protect them. We thank you for divine protection, mighty God. We thank you for food on our table. We thank you for the roof of our head as the rain poured down, mighty God. We are of shelter and we give you praise. We don't deserve the things that you have given us, but Lord, you see us faithful. You see us worthy. Mighty God, you clean us up. You take us up out of the pit, out of the miry clay, out of the murky place, Lord God. And you show us favor. You establish our goings. And Lord, we just want to praise your name. Even when we are not qualified, Lord, you make us qualified. Even when we are not worthy, Lord. Oh God, you show us favor. Thank you, Jesus. You write off all our wrongs, mighty God. You wash our sins, oh Jesus Christ. You clean us up, mighty God. You give us second chance. And Lord, we just want to praise you because sickness was not meant to take us out. 
Sickness was not meant to take us out. Therefore, Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you, Jesus. We don't deserve anything that you give us, but Lord, you remember us. And some of us, we have covenant with you, Lord. And you keep your covenant. You say you'll never break your covenant. And therefore, Lord, we will never break our covenant that we make with you. And this morning, we are reassured of your word, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You said you'll give strength to the weak. You said you'll make the weak say that they are strong. You say you'll give riches to the poor. You'll make the poor say that they are rich. My God, you show us favor in high places. You said our gift will take us there, mighty God. A man's gift make room for him among great men. And Lord God, we bless you. Our gifts are making room for us. Oh God, the gift that you have given us that we don't deserve. These gifts are making room for us among great men, Lord. We just want to show a gratitude. We just want to have an attitude of gratitude and give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray even now, our children, oh God, cover them. Cover them, oh God, in your precious blood. In your precious blood. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We bless your name. We bow before your throne. Oh God, we declare healing this hour. We declare breakthrough, mighty God. We declare favor in uncommon places. We declare unmerited favor that we don't deserve today in the atmosphere, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Somebody's in debt, oh God. Oh, mighty God, you said, I'm canceling that debt. I'm canceling that debt. I am canceling that debt in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody's in pain, you said, I'm healing them. I am healing, I'm bringing healing to them. I'm bringing packages with healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we receive it. Hallelujah. We receive healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you, oh God. With thanksgiving, we pray. With thanksgiving, we pray. We bring sacrifice of praise to you, Jesus Christ. We offer it up to you, a sacrifice of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. We bring sacrifice of praise, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Remember those that are homeless this hour. Remember those, oh God, that have no job. Remember those, oh God, who are in the pit without documents to come out. Oh, mighty miracle, miracle working God. Remember them today. We decree and we declare favor, unmerited favor, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name, in the name, that's above every name. In the name that's above every name, Jesus. In the name that's above every name. In the name that's above every name. We decree and we declare a breakthrough. Oh God, we decree and we declare it, Almighty God. Lord, we will keep our covenant with you. Your word said, Mighty God. That all that we said out of our mouth, let our yes be a yes, and let our no be a no. And therefore, Lord, we will keep our covenant, because all your promises to us are yes and amen. Lord, strengthen us. Strengthen us so we can keep our covenant with you. Strengthen us. We declare strength today. We declare strength upon this live broadcast. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cover every soul that is here. I cover this broadcast right now. I decree and I declare testimony. I cover it with the blood in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare testimony in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, revive us. Revive us, oh God. Revive us, oh God. Revive us, oh God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Revive us. Revive us, Lord. Revive us. Revive us, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we remember all the things that we have promised to do for you. Thank you, Jesus. When we were in trouble, we said, Lord, if you take me out of this situation, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Many of us, when we got into that pit, we said, Lord, if you help me out of this one, Lord, I promise I will give you my life. I'll serve you the rest of my life. If you take me out of this hospital bed alive, Lord, if you wake me up out of this surgery alive, if you wake me up, mighty God, out of it, if I come out of this place alive, Lord, I will serve you the rest of my life. Many of us have made covenant with God, and as soon as we get out, we forget. But God has not forgotten. God has not forgotten. God has not forgotten the things that you said when you were in trouble. God has not forgotten the things that you promised him when you were in that situation, when you were in that predicament, when you were in that courtroom, when you were in that jailhouse, when you were nobody, you made promises to God. And God said, I remember my promises and I want you to remember yours. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your covenant with God. Remember what you said to God. If he give you those documents, if he give you that visa, if he give you those papers, what you were going to do for him. God has not forgotten. God don't sleep. God don't blink. Jesus, this is why the Bible reminds us in the twinkling of an eye. Jesus, remember your promises Remember your covenant with God. Remember what you promised him when you were in situations. Remember when you were in tears and you're crying, you say, God, move this man out of my life. Remember you said, God, move this woman out of my brother's life, out of my life. Remember when you said, Lord, if you give me that husband. Remember when you said, Lord, if you only give me this job. Remember when you said, Lord, show me that favor. And the Lord is saying now, I remember all the promises that you make. And you still have not. Hold your end of the bargain, mighty God. You still have not hold your end of the bargain. Remember your promises to God. Remember all your promises to God. Every day we ask God for, 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 to remember us. But today I came to tell you, remember your promises. We, every day we ask in God to bless us, to give us this. But remember, God wants us to remember our covenant with him. He said, all his promise to us are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Remember what you told him when you were in, when you were by yourself in that pain, going through those motions. Remember the things that you said to God. He promised that he will never fail us. And he didn't fail us. So what about your promises to God? Oh God. Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Covenant keeping God. There is none like you, Jesus. You never break your covenant. The Alpha and the Omega, there is none like him. He keep his promise. He has promised he will never fail. I will adore Jesus. I will adore your Lord because you never fail. Your gratefulness is forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Your gratefulness is forevermore. He will never fail. He is a covenant keeper. He won't fail you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He keeps covenant. 
He keep covenant. Every promise God make, he's keeping them. And this morning I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share this word because we have a covenant keeper. We have a man, yes, Jesus Christ himself, who, who came to hurt and he dwell among men. He came to earth and he dwell among men. He came as a man and he left in the spirit. He showed up in our life, walking and, and eating with, with dishonest accountants. Yes, he ate with dishonest accountant. He drank water from prostitute. Hallelujah. Yes, he didn't partial. He came to the poor, people who did not know who they were, and he changed their lives. My God, he was called master. He was called rabbi. He was the greatest teacher. Yes, he was a very compassionate man when he was down here with us, with our ancestors. Glory to God. He kept his word. He spoke the truth. He rebuked sin. He rebuked Satan. He even rebuked one of this one of his disciples. Hallelujah. One of his disciples betrayed him. I came this morning to introduce you to Jesus Christ. One of the men that was following him betrayed him. And so he left earth. He left earth. The Bible reminds us that God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When Jesus Christ was on earth, he didn't tell anybody to worship him. He said, I am he. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ was on earth, he never told anyone to worship him. He said, I am he. He said, I came to do my father's business. He said, I am he. He said, let us do the work of him. When he left, he said, let us do the work of him that sent us while it's yet daytime. Some of us are still waiting for nighttime. There is nothing much we can do at night. Let us do the work of him who sent us. Yes, while it's still day. While it is still daytime, we have to do some work for the Lord. While it is still daytime, we have to clear the air. While it is still daytime, let us repent. While it's still daytime, let us repent of our sins. Let us repent of our wicked ways. Let us ask God to forgive us because the work has to continue. Let us do the work of him who sent us. Let us put our personal feelings aside. Let us come out of our flesh. My God, the work is plenty, but the laborers are few. Let us come out of our flesh. Let us come out of our feelings. The harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. Let us come out of our feelings. Let us forgive those who hurt us and do the work of God. Sometimes that is the only blockage in our life. Unforgiveness. We refuse to forgive those who hurt us, but every day we pray and we ask God to forgive us. How is God going to forgive us when we refuse to forgive those who hurt us? My God, what about our covenant with God? There was a reason why we make that covenant with him. When we were in that dark place, when we were in that low place, we make covenant with God. Yes. We said, Lord, I'm tired of living in poverty. I'm tired of living from paycheck to paycheck. Help me, oh God, so I can take care of my family. And God done it because you make a covenant that when God take you out of that 
neighborhood and bless you with your own home, you will live your life to please him. And God is waiting on us to fulfill our promises to him. God is waiting on us to go and feed the hungry and the poor out there. God is waiting on us to walk and carry the word. God is waiting on us to walk with the Bible on top of our head. So cinnamon out there can confess their sins. God is waiting for us. For our testimony to change the lives of those that are affected by our actions. God is waiting for us to preach the gospel in season and out of season. God is waiting for us to bring forth the gospel in season and out of season. God is waiting for us to be honest. God is waiting for us to talk the truth. God is waiting for us to stop fighting our neighbors. God is waiting for us to stop bearing false witness against our neighbors. God is waiting for us to clean up our actions. God is waiting for us to do the right thing. God is waiting for us. Thank you, Jesus. God is waiting for us. God is waiting for us to repent. God is waiting for us to come clean. Some of us, we lie to get certain things and God is waiting for us to repent. God is saying it's time to repent. God is saying, stop worshiping man and worship me. God is saying, not because somebody put some cash in your hands, don't worship them. I was the one who put that in their heart so they can release it in your life. God is saying, stop living your life to please man. Live your life to please me. That's what God said. Hallelujah. God is saying, what happened to your covenant? God is saying, I keep my end of the bargain. What about you? God is saying, today is the day to repent. This is the day the Lord has given us. Let us rejoice. God is saying, stop being ungrateful. God is saying, stop complaining. Stop murmuring. God is saying, stop living in sin. Stop fornicating, stop backbite and tail bearing. Hallelujah. God is saying, yes, cut out the foolishness. God is saying in this time, you really want your breakthrough. You got to work. He said, let us do the work of him that sent us while it's still daytime. Many of us are asking God for things that we don't deserve. But he still give it to us because of his faithfulness. He don't break his promise. Hallelujah. God never break his promise. My God. It's time for us to do the right thing. It's time for us to stop thinking of the past. I just want to say this right here. If you are here. And I offend you personally. Take it up with, with the Lord. It was not intentional. So if you are here and the sermon came and it hurt you, take it up with God. If you are here and I hurt you personally without knowing about it, forgive me. Please accept my humble apology. It's coming close to the end of the year. I'm not taking anyone with me into 2021. I'm not carrying anyone in my heart. I am not doing it. I refuse. I refuse to enter into 2021 with you or anyone in your family, in my heart. I'm not doing it. I refuse to travel into the new year holding a grudge. So if you are here and you are carrying a beef because the Lord used me to speak to you and you're offended. Take it up with God. I have no right to talk to you about that. But if I hurt you personally because I know you and you are following me secretly and I don't, you know, just forgive me. Let it go and move on because I, I, I didn't remember. So if I hurt you, please accept my humble apology. But if the word of God came and you process it and you deem it as offensive because you think it's in my feelings, take it up with God. It's not in my feelings. No, I did not tailor this message to offend anyone. I speak what the Lord placed in my spirit. 
This is why when I came, most of the times you see me writing is because I'm just starting to write what the Lord is downloading. So, whatever it is that you're going through, because of a message that the Lord used me to bring, I'm sorry, you're going to have to deal with God on that one. Glory to God. I say this with no apologies. But if I hurt you out there in the world and I didn't know even before I gave my life to the Lord and you remember and you're still carrying a grudge, forgive me. I'm not that person anymore. I'm not wearing those clothes anymore. I'm not wearing that garment anymore. I have given it all to the Lord. I sold that house. The whole building is destroyed. So don't carry me in your heart unless it's for something good. Hallelujah. People of God, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Today is day number six of the fasting. And I'm grateful to God. I know many of you are here for the first time. I see a lot of new faces, new names rather. Welcome. Thank you for staying with us. You know, many of you are here because the Lord assigned you to this platform. Many of you are in my life because God sent you. Don't allow the devil to rob you. Many of you, I mean, I know for a fact many times the devil speak to me too. God speak to me, but the devil will speak to me. I have to rebuke him. You know, when I do this, it's I have to give him my elbow. Many times the devil will say to me, this individual don't like you or this individual is plotting against you. I will take it to the Lord in prayer. I don't call you. I have nothing to say. If the Lord show me something negative about you, I won't, uh, no, I won't approach you. I go to God and I pray for you. Why? Because it is the devil at work. Amen. Many times people are doing good and the moment they begin to listen to the voice of the enemy, their old perspective change. I'm not dealing with that platform. I'm not dealing with the woman of God because I have a funny feeling. Rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. God will never tell you to do something bad. Only the enemy will do that. So be careful of who you are listening to. The voice, because we all have those voices that we are listening to. Be careful, people of God. The enemy don't want you to be successful in life. He don't want you to prosper now your children. So he will hold you in bondage. And when he tell you don't do something, it's because he, you give him authority. Don't give the devil authority. You see these strings right here on the prayer shawl? This, I'm wearing my prayer shawl. Today, I'm going to tell you why these strings are here and why I decided to take these things from only Israel and no other because people make them all over the world but i only take mine from israel and the reason is because god told moses to do it so this only mean one thing they were wearing their prayer shawl but they didn't have any tassel that's all it means hallelujah hmm. thank you jesus Hallelujah. God gave an assignment to Moses. God told Moses, hallelujah, to do it. But before we get into it, today is day number six of the fasting. And a lot of people don't know that numbers have significance. So before we get into it, I'm just going to jump over to the book of Revelations, chapter 13 and verse 18, before we start. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and 18, the final, the final verse in chapter 13, Revelation, people, somebody write this down, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, it's the last verse, hallelujah, in verse 13, in chapter 13, it says, here, before I go to 18, I'm going to say something from 17. It says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had the work or the name of the beast 
or the number of his name. Verse 18 says, here is wisdom. Let him that understand count the number of the beasts, for it is the number of a man. There were six beasts, but number represent man. And his number is six, six. Six is the number of man. Six, 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 the devil used it. But six, six, six was not intended for the devil. Here is wisdom. We need to use wisdom. God created man in six days. God made man in six days. Initially, man was supposed to be six foot tall. This is why some men, all of us were supposed to be six foot tall. Hallelujah. When you die, you go six foot under, six foot six. There is a significance for six in our life. It's not a bad number. But the devil always step in and try to get involved in God's business. He will never leave. The devil will never leave. It doesn't matter what you do. The devil won't leave. You cannot kill him. You destroy him. Because he's on our assignment. Hallelujah. It says wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of bees, for it is the number of a man. His number is six, six, six. People of God, Let us use wisdom. 666 is the number of man. So now you know, it's not a bad number. But those out there decided to use for themselves, to make, to scare you. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of 666. When the devil know you're not afraid, He's angry. Don't be fooled. It's in the Bible. It is in the Bible. It is written. Some people say 666 and they run. Don't run. Tell the devil you're not afraid. People will use your own food to poison you. Give the devil a taste of his own medicine. You're not afraid. Six is the number of man. Let us go back to the book of the covenant keeper. Go into Numbers chapter 15. A lot of people see prayer shawl in different styles and they don't know the meaning of it, the purpose of it. Today you will understand this thing right here that's hanging. Jump into the book of Numbers chapter 15. Grab your Bible, people of God. Today is day six of the journey, day six of the fasting. And we need to understand who we are and why we do the things we do. Everything have a purpose, people of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I'm saying it because it's true. Numbers chapter 15, and I'm going into verse 37. Bible remind us, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garment throughout their generations. Throughout their generations.
throughout no a generation has no end he said and that they put on fringes on the border and a ribbon of blue the ribbon you see the fringes it's got blue in it hallelujah and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the lord and do them so this is not just here for style when you look upon it so it means that you can wear it you can hang it up you can use it for decoration you can wear it as a scarf yes you can wear it as style i used i wear mine on my head most of the time most of the time i i get comfort i remember the other day i was laying down in a medical facility and the only time i had comfort is when i took this from my bag and I wrapped my head and I turned my back and went to sleep. It comforts me. I don't know if anyone here know the true meaning of this garment. It is a garment. The Lord told Moses, he said, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you and that you seek not after your own heart and your and your own eyes, which you use to go a whoring because we look we, we tend to look everywhere. We look our eyes our eyes this is why we have to be careful what we lay our eyes on hallelujah he said that you you don't go and seek after your own heart when you look at the prayer child it reminds you of the commandment you see people wearing it and you ask them what is it for no you can tell them what it's for what it's about that you may that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your god so you know you know the things that happen when you wear this garment or you even look at it it helps you I remember when I ordered mine from Israel. I just lost my job. And when it came, I put it on and I grabbed the anointing oil. I was in my bedroom and I began to pray and bless the oil and bless the shawl. And I began to get into a different realm. And I was talking to God and I hear the voice of the Lord said, when you're done, God is funny. God is very funny. I ordered this for myself, right? Not this particular one, because I gave it away. While I was there blessing the shawl and the oil, I hear the Lord said, when you finish, order it and supply my people. And I said, what? I hear, order it. No, I don't know anything about supplying anyone with oil. You know, because I'm doing ministry, but that is not, that's above me. I'm not thinking those things. So I know God speaking to me about me for something to do. I said, okay. And then the Lord began to remind me when I was in the Caribbean, what I used to do for a living. I used to have my own business. I said, okay, 
Uh, you don't have to say anything more. You know, there are some things when God begins to speak to you about it, all you need is one word. That was it. He reminded me what I used to do before I came here. Yes. So I said, thank you, Jesus. I was a businesswoman. Was. I said, thank you, Lord. That's it. So ever since then, I begin to order them from Israel. Anointing oil, prayer show, scars, beautiful scars with the map of Jerusalem. You know, holy water. These are the things that God is saying that I should do. When I read the scripture, it was all good. But when I ordered mine and it came, I was excited. I said, yes, I'm good now. I always wanted one. And I found a website in Israel that I could order from. So it, it took a long time to come. But when it finally came, I, I, I was ecstatic. But let me share something with you. It was not about me. It's all about you all that's here. God said, supply my people with it. I was already preaching on social media. But that part kind of hit me a little bit. And then the Lord began to speak to me about my past. Listen to me, people of God. Be obedient to God. I came here this morning to talk about the prayer shawl. Because many people don't know what it's about. Many people did not know these scriptures are in the Bible about it. Remember. Let me see if I have one here. Remember, Jesus Christ, this, this, we are in the Old Testament because we are in the book of Numbers and, this, and it is the Old Testament. But in the book, in the book of Matthew, there was a woman. Hallelujah. Here. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody remember the woman with the issue of blood? Look. Holding on to Jesus, prayer shawl, the hem. That was the woman with the issue of blood. Grabbing it. She was sitting on the ground. That is the woman with the issue of blood grabbing the prayer, the hem of Jesus' garment. So we are in the Old Testament, people of God, in the book of Numbers. But in the New Testament, because Numbers is Old Testament, but in the New Testament, Jesus came and he was wearing his prayer shawl, his prayer, gar his garment. Hallelujah. He was wearing his garment. So now I'm here to let you know that this came over from the Old Testament. Thank you, Jesus. My God, the woman was afflicted. She was, she had an issue. She was known as a woman. She was not known as Miss So-and-so or Mistress So-and-so. She was just a woman. But when she met Jesus, when she touched this, 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 the hem of his garment, it pulled virtue out of Jesus Christ. When she grabbed the hem of his garment, the bleeding stopped. Jesus said, Something just happened. Who touched me? Somebody touched me because I feel strength left my body. You see, the, this prayer, this, this thing is what you put on when you pray. In worship, it carries a lot of weight. Remember when God sent Elijah to go and bless Elisha. So when he died, Elisha could take over. 
Elijah never speak to the man. Elijah just pass by him and touch him with his mantle. This was his mantle. It was his shawl. You see, you can wrap it up. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It was not a piece of, of, of string wrapped up with some feather. No. He, the Bible said he take his cloak and some different version of the Bible said his mantle. The same mantle drop from Elijah when he ascended up into that chariot of fire. Elisha picked it up and when he was on his way to cross back over to Jordan River, he strike it and the water separated so he would walk through it. Because Elijah never done that. But because Elisha received a double portion of anointing that Elijah was carrying. So he could do twice as much. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But we are talking about this garment that's on my head. So a lot of people out of there is some... I, I, I don't understand, but... I love the word made in Israel. Yes. One of the reason is because that was where Moses was when God spoke to him about this thing. It's not about who makes it better than who. It's not about who is smarter than who people have got. I, I chose to do the right thing. Hallelujah. I chose to do the right thing. We are not knocking anyone. But I encourage you, if you don't have a garment as such, you need to order it. And if you choose not to order from me, that is fine too. But get your prayer shawl. But because by just looking at it, it reminds you of the commandment. The covenant that God have with us. When you look at it, you're not supposed to think about anything else but just the promises of God, the commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thou shall not uh, um, become a false witness against your neighbor. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shall not steal. Yes. Thou shall not kill. Commandments. God have a covenant with us. Today I came to ask you about your covenant with God. We all make covenant with God at some point. Some of us, we did it when we were in tears. Some of us, we did it when, you know, everything was not okay. But I came to ask you, people of God. Moses receive commandment from God to download to the children of Israel. And the reason why I picked this up because this is part of the New Testament. The New Testament came and Jesus Christ himself was wearing a garment from the Old Testament. He was representing the truth. He stand for the truth. So when you see someone as of this day onward wearing their prayer shawl, don't look at them funny. They are not crazy. They are crazy for Jesus Christ. Jesus came and he came wearing his prayer shawl. Someone just touched the hem of it. Elijah used it and smash on Elisha and walk past him. He didn't have to speak to him. He said, hold on, I'm coming. Elisha said, hold on, I'm coming. I'm going to cook some food for my family. Because he was out in the field with the animals, taking care of family business. So they know the authority that this prayer shall come with. Once it's cast on you, it's another level. It is another level. My God. 
So when the woman touched it, it was her faith. Because she didn't have money anymore to pay any more doctors. Her money was done. She was broke for years of going to the doctor for the same problem. Her bank dry out, her bank account dry up. So now she turned to the mighty healer and she didn't have to touch him. One encounter with Jesus Christ and she was healed. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who the Lord sent me out here to talk to. But I came to tell you, today is day number five. Number six, tomorrow is the final day of the fasting. I don't know what kind of covenant you make with God. But it's time to do things right so you can receive blessings in this season. Many of us are throwing, you know, our prayers out in the air and it's not going anywhere. Why? Because we're not connecting. You have to be positioned. You have to be in alignment with the word. You can't just throw your prayers everywhere. It's not going to connect. It's just going to bounce back like blank, blank shots. Yes. When you pray, it has to connect for you to have tangible results. I say this the other day because, it, you know, I just thank God for the word. This is why a lot of people, they have been praying and fasting and nothing is happening because they're just praying and, and throwing the prayers out there and they're throwing it at the wrong people because they're not sure. People of God, connect, get connected. Get connected with heaven. Get connected. Get plugged in. We have one day to finish this seven-day fasting. And I just want you to know, your prayers can be answered, but you have to shift some things around. You have to change your prayer point. You have to be serious. Don't guess if this is the person that you name that you have to call. Tell God the situation and pray, cry out to God. You know, one of the things I get to understand that when you pray, you're opening heaven. You're unlocking heaven doors with your prayer, but you're also unlocking hell because your prayer stir up Satan and he's from hell. So when you pray certain prayer, you unlock some things from the devil's house because sometimes your, 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 your wealth is trapped in the devil's kingdom. You have to unlock heaven to release it. But if it's already released and it's trapped in hell, you have to pray even harder for it to be released to you. Daniel prayed. And the angel said, Daniel, the first day you pray, your breakthrough was released. But the devil know, because he was you al you unlock hell with your prayer. You open, you, you, you rumble some spirits because this thing that you're asking God for, a lot of people want it. You're asking God to give you power and the demons are angry. They don't want you to be in control because when you, God gives you this power and authority, you can speak life into dead things and it will come back to life. So the devil grab it. The devil snatch it. And when the devil snatched it for 21 days, the devil withstood the angel that was coming with the power. Because Daniel intercede for some people. So you see, when you pray for others, God will bless you. If you really want God to bless you, pray for other people. Especially the ones you don't like. Ask God to elevate them. Ask God to lift them up. Yes. If you really want your prayers answered, Glory to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I came to tell you, people of God, you need to be connected. The reason why many of you have not received anything from God, because you're not straight. You have been bended. You need to get back straight. Get straight and align yourself. Get in alignment 
for your assignment. We were not built to break. And if we crack, we go to the potter's house and he will fix it. But I came to let you know today, what about your covenant with God? You need your prayers answered, but things are not right. And this is why the prayers are not working. It doesn't matter how powerful they may seem, you're not connected. You have to be connected. Some people said, I don't have to go to church. I got my own church at home. You're joking. You say you don't have to worship with anybody because your granny, your granny was a mad woman. We need each other. We need each other. No man is an island. None of us. We need each other. When you pray, you, you got the keys to unlock doors in heaven, but you also unlock doors in hell because you stir up the devil. This is why when, you know, God bless you with certain things, some people don't speak to you anymore because the devil used them to show you that he's mad at you. So when people show you an ugly face, don't get angry at them. It's not them that you're dealing with. It's the principalities and powers it's the demon that is fighting them. They make themselves available. Hallelujah. Sometimes somebody will come at you and you shut it down. And before the day is over, somebody else come at you. It's because they allow the devil to use them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times you are this close to your breakthrough and the devil will tell you, don't go to that woman of God page today. She don't like you. She's fighting against you. She's praying against you. Pray against what? I'm here to do the work of God, not the work of the devil. So don't let the devil rob you. Many of you, the Lord sent you here to be a blessing so he could open your doors and you refuse to do it, but you're still coming and the doors are still closed because you allow the devil to dictate to you. Don't let the devil rob you. God wants to bless you. God wants to open your doors, but you have to be obedient people of God. Jesus Christ himself were obedient because this thing started in the Old Testament. We are in the book of Numbers chapter 15 where God said, let them wear the tassel on their garment. Hallelujah. He says, speak unto them. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. He says, speak. Speak. Hababoko shataya. Jesus. He said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel throughout their generations. To come, you must make tassels for the hem of your clothing and attach them with blue cord when you see the tassel you will remember and obey all the commandments of the lord instead of following your own desire and defiling your own selves defiling yourselves and you are that you are prone to do the tassels will help you to remember that you must obey all my commands and be holy to your god so this thing will help you to be holy to God. Just look at it. If you don't choose to wear it, you can hang it up in your house. One one young woman, you know, um, she called me and it was time for me to pray. And when I look right over her bed was her prayer shawl. It was such a beautiful thing. Yes. Another one, I went to her home to visit a friend of mine when i got there she had the prayer shawl hanging 
over the bed. I said, wow, that is so beautiful. People of God, let me share something with you. We all need something to look at. You see, the Bible never tells us to put statue in our house to look at. There is no statue of Jesus Christ that the Bible said we should look at. Statue is an idol and we cannot worship idol. The Bible said when they look at the thing, they will remember the commandment. This is the only thing that the Bible make it clear that we can look at. Not a picture not a statue look at it just to look at this garment and you'll remember the commandment the bible never say look at a statue the bible never say look at a picture many people have all different pictures i used to do it in their homes because that is a picture of jesus christ the bible never said no place in the bible to find a picture with anyone to put in your house no he said, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look unto upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So this is instructions because when you look at it, you will remember the commandment of God and do it. No place I've ever seen because I love to read. Some things I translate it real quick because I want to see what it said in English. So I will go to translation and, and, and figure it out if I don't understand it or I get the English version so I could understand clearer what this thing is saying. People have got the only place in the Bible you see where it said, look on it and you remember the commandment of God is the prayer shawl. Nothing else, no statue, no picture, nothing. Because once you're looking at a statue, you begin to look at an idol. It's an idol. Don't idolize anything. God never said, look at people of God for the love of God. Many, many of us have things in our home, statues. It's true. Especially you're passing by some people's homes and they got different statues in the yard. It is witchcraft because it's not of God. Having those statues and they talk about Holy Mary, Holy... No, St. Peter, no. It's not of God. There is no place in the Bible that tells you that these statues are supposed to be in your home or even in the front of your yard. People of God, it is witchcraft. These things are witchcraft. It's not of God. It does not represent God. It does not represent not one word in the Bible. And all we have is the word of God. And whatever the word of God said, that's what we are going to do. All we have is the word. We have nothing else. There's an old song that says, then you have nothing until you know the love of God. I wish I could say, thank you, Jesus. That's all. That is all. The Bible said we should look at it. And remember our covenant with God. No, some people were not able to sleep. And when they order the prayer shawl, hey, hey, it's the sunlight that wakes them up. Some people used to carry so much pain and burden. And when they order their anointing oil and their prayer shawl, let me tell you these people of God, they call back with testimony. Because once the devil see that he run. I encourage you this hour to get connected. Hallelujah. The prayer shawls are here. I've been fasting and praying over them for the longest while. Sanctify the anointing oil. Sanctify them. Bless them. So when it gets to you and you hold it, you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Any place you're late and you sit there, you feel comforted because these are the testimonies that people call me with. So I encourage you, clear instruction. I'm coming to you straight from the Bible. Everything that we do, 
Let's get in agreement with God. Let us do what God said, people of God. Let us come in agreement with God. Not with man, with God. Let us remember our covenant with God because he said, you don't forget, God will never forget something that he promised you. He'd rather give you more than what you ask for. But we, concerning our promises to him, we break it every day. We, some of us, we forget until he sends someone to remind us. So I encourage you, remember your covenant. Somebody said, I sleep with it at night. In daytime, I put <laughs> my meds inside. <laughs> yeah. I remember, like I said, I laid here in that facility. And when I tie my head, some women, they just pull back. But when it was time for me to come home, I couldn't find it. It was hidden. So I, I asked a few people, I said, listen, I remember where I was. Could you please go and find my prayer shawl? And that one I had was the Pentecostal fire. They took it and hide it. It was stashed. When I got it, it took me one day before I got it. When I got it, it was nicely folded. It was presented to me nicely folded. I said, mm-hmm. I didn't say a word. I said, mm-hmm. Let me tell you something, people of God. We need to be, use wisdom. We need to use wisdom in all we do. When I was in Dominica Republic doing charity, I tied my waist with it. You know, I was in pain. And that thing helped me to, yes, the pain subsided until I was done with charity. Mm -hmm. I was in pain. Many of you see me there walking with a hunch. I was in a lot of pain. So I decided to tie my waist with that prayer shawl and keep on going, even in the rain. I was not even supposed to allow the water to get to me, but God kept me. People of God, let me tell you this, be obedient to God. Whatever God tell you to do, do it. Don't let the devil rob you. The reason why your prayers are not connecting, it's because you are doing things wrong. It's time to get connected, get plugged in. Yes, get plugged in. So you, your prayers can be answered. We serve a prayer answering God. We serve a prayer answering God. The reason why many people don't receive anything is because they don't believe, secretly don't believe. They don't. They don't believe. But the woman with the issue of blood didn't have any choice because she didn't have any more money. All her money was gone because to go to the doctor for 12 years straight, to be bleeding for 12 years and going to the doctor for 12 years, you don't have nothing left. There's nothing left. So she heard about Jesus Christ. And she said, all I want to do is to just touch the hem of his garment, the prayer shawl. I just want to touch the cords because I heard that if I touch the cords, the commandment will be activated in my life. It will help me, Jesus. The commandment will help me. Because I have nothing else to lose. The woman have lost everything. She has nothing else to lose. People of God, we are in the word. We are staying in the word. We're not getting lost here. We are staying in the word of God. Once you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And you align your life with the scripture. God will answer your prayer. So check yourself. Today is day number six. And if you have not received anything since the beginning of the fasting. Yesterday I received a phone call. You know, I just want to thank God. God loves to show off. And how God show off? When God ready to show off, he gives his people testimony. So I just want to thank God again 
for those of you who have, he have sent to stand up here with us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To stand up with us in prayer, backing us up in prayer. I just want to say thank you for your obedience to God. Because I know many of you are not here to be in the number. You are here to pray so you don't even show up in the numbers. But I know you're there because the Lord showed me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Six. It's day six. What have you decided to do? Because nothing is happening for you. And you have a long prayer request list. You're going to take out your prayer request list and you're going to pray over it. You're going to get connected to heaven and you're going to destroy hell. Whatever God is going to release in your life is going to destroy hell because some people are going to get mad because God will answer your prayer. You have to be connected. Don't just throw the prayers everywhere. You won't be connected. Be, be aligned. Align yourself with the word of God. Remind God of his promises. Thank you, Jesus. Now you know the purpose and the meaning of the prayer shawl. Now you know the whole purpose and the meaning of the prayer shawl. The prophet Elijah used his and cast it on Elisha. That was the first time he touched him. And the second time is when he picked it up when Elisha had to drop it because you don't need it to go to heaven. Everything is in heaven. I encourage the people of God. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the promises of God. It is all good and well when, you know, you, you do other things, but make sure what you're doing, it will glorify God. Make sure whatever you're doing, it's been done to glorify God. Hallelujah. Make sure your life, we're talking about our covenant with God, and his promises to us, his commandments, they are still active. Jesus wore his prayer garment. And everybody know what happened when that woman that couldn't stop bleeding, when she grabbed it, what happened? The bleeding stopped. I encourage you people of God to be obedient to the voice of God. If you don't have a prayer garment, order it. And even if you choose not to order it from me, that's fine. But make sure whoever you order it from, they bless it and sanctify it and send it to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's all I have to say. Hallelujah. You go to some people's homes or you're passing by, you see all those statues in the front? Run. They themselves don't even know what they are doing. Some people do it because they see their family did it, granny do it, great-grandmother do it. I'm here to tell you, run. It does not signify the Bible. It has no significance to the word of God. Not one. Yes, the God who answered by fire said, you need to have it. He said, for the generation, this is what he said to Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they made fringes in the borders of their garments throughout, throughout the generation. That's why we end up with it, because it was to be true out. So it went from the Old Testament to the New Testament unto us, because it was a long, long, long time ago, but because it was throughout the generations, we became a part of it. It was not just for them. It was just throughout 
This is the word of God. He said, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, which you used to go a whoring. It means that we used to look at all kinds of things with our lust of the eyes. That's what it means, the lust of the eyes. We go and we look at all kinds of things. He said, no, look at the prayer garment and remember the commandment. It is the word of God. That has nothing to do with me. Don't, don't, don't take it up with me. Take it up with God. He wants you to know. If you are here and you didn't know anything about the prayer shawl or the prayer garment or the reason why I used to have them lined out, different colors, I still have them. You understand me? But I want you to know there is a reason why the Lord said, send, look. He said to me, supply my people with oil and shawl now these are just extra stuff the holy water mm -hmm. because some people prefer holy water than oil they're both good they both came this came from the river jordan but i just want you to know people of god i just want you to know mm -hmm. thank you jesus hallelujah It is well, Sister Carlene. I declare victory over your life, but you need to write down on your prayer request. Tomorrow is the last day of the fasting, and I specifically say, write your prayer request down and pray over it. You have to believe, because if you don't believe, it makes no sense. I'm here. Uh, it's not necessary for me to be here if you don't believe in your prayers because most of you, it's your prayers that God brought me in your life. It's because you pray certain prayer. God brought me in your life so you can believe. Hallelujah. And it's my prayer that God, you know, that you give birth to your ministry. Many of you that are here, you have powerful, you know, anointing. You're carrying powerful weight and you have serious deliverance ministry to give birth to. And I'm praying for many of you to give birth to your ministry. Yes. That is my prayer, that you give birth to your ministry. When you go to a platform, and by the way, an individual writes. You can tell that this person, because some people don't even know they're carrying weight. You can tell by the contents of what the person is writing, the kind of weight they are carrying. If you really want to know a person on social media, watch what they write on other people's platform. So when people come here and whatever they write, if you really want to know the weight that they are carrying, God is exposing some people right now. If you really want to know the weight that they are, the level that they are, watch what they write on social media because it's how they are feeling. Mm -hmm. It's how they are feeling. They can't hide it. You see, you can hide you can lie, but you cannot hide your true feelings because your true feelings is what you have to write when you go to a platform, especially when the presence of the Lord is active, when the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Sometimes you see some people, they come and they write some things. It makes you wonder if this person is saved. If this person is really saved, we have to pray for this one. Yes. Yes. We have to pray for this one. We have to pray for that one because all they write is foolishness. All they do is pure greetings. They are not in the spirit. They are just here to see who is here and what they, listen to me, people of God, don't live your life anyhow. Because if someone is in the spirit, they can tell by you, the things you write on social media, the kind of person you are spiritually, because this is spiritual. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Yes, I'm saying it because I just want some people to wake up and be in the spirit. Because when you're in the spirit, the devil cannot fight you. But when you're in your flesh, eh, he attack you. The devil will attack you. I just want you to know, people of God, be in the spirit. And whatever promise you make to God, live to it. Live up to your end of the bargain. Because God is holding, he's a promise keeper. God is holding you to your word. We hold him to his word every day. And this is why we read the Bible. But God is saying, look at you. You're over there asking me to give you this and to give you that. And you don't remember what you promised me. No, you don't. That's what God said. You don't remember what you promised me. Hallelujah. So people of God, I encourage you this hour. Remember your covenant with God. Remember your covenant. Remember your covenant with God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Remember, all of us have covenant with God. Every one of us. It's the the thing is that some of us don't remember because some of, some of the time it's been so long. We were young, going through some rut, going through some issues, and we said, "God, if you take me out of this, this is the thing I'm going to do. Forgive me, oh God." We have to. We make covenant with God. Some of us we don't even know that it was a covenant we were making. We were just asking for help just like when you know what's his name the twins jacob and esau esau was hungry and he gave up his birthright just for some food he was hungry he was he needed something to eat and jacob said give me a birthright so you see the birthright was on jacob's mind People don't just say stuff like that. That was premeditated. But it takes Esau to be hungry in order for Jacob to say that. Because that's the only thing you could use to get him. Food. Some of us, we need to turn the plates down continually even after this fasting. Some of us, even after these seven days of fasting, we need to keep the plates down. Because we got to get some things out of our system. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. We need to get some stuff out of our system. So we need to cut down on this great food intake. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. It's true. Hallelujah. People of God, you know, like I said, today is day six of the journey. And I'm going to come back in two hours. I'll be back in two hours so we can break bread and pray. And therefore, I just want you to know Remember your covenant with God. Remember what you promised God. His name is Jehovah. Remember your promises to him because he's keeping his promises with you. That's why some of us are still alive because God is keeping his promises. Some of us should have been dead already, dead long time. But God said, I'm keeping my promises. Remember your end of the bargain. Hallelujah. People of God, remember, we are blessing two people financially. Remember your donations. Don't forget, remember your donations. Every dollar counts. It doesn't matter how small it is. We are blessing two people financially. Remember your donations. Remember to send off your donations. I don't want you to forget send off your donations so we can have it to bless two people my god i hear the lord said based on the amount maybe three people will be blessed in the month of november 
depends on the amount comes in so send off your donations don't wait until it's too late to send it up people need to get it we have to release it by the 15th of the month today is the 28th hallelujah yes so mm, in the next 18 days hallelujah so send off your donations the ministry need help so we can do this thing amen god bless you all and i will see you in two hours come back with your crackers and your water or your bread and your grape juice i know a lot of people are home some are at work i encourage you we have one day to go if you didn't join and you are following us take part you need your breakthrough a lot of things are happening in the realms of the spirit and you need a breakthrough participate i'll see you at noon i will see you at noon hallelujah Somebody said it's my birth month. I, I get to understand that a lot of people were born in the month of October. So to all the October babies, happy birthday. To all the October babies, happy birthday. Remember, it's 10% off and all the shawl and the oil the gift box and stuff it's 10 percent off until the next until the 31st of this month hallelujah today is day six we have one day to go yes we have one day to go tomorrow is the final day of the fasting i'm excited yes i'm not anxious i'm excited because a lot of things are happening in the realms of the spirit so i'm excited i am truly excited for this seven day fasting yes i am i see the hand of god and i'm waiting for testimonies so i'm patient i'm patiently waiting for testimonies hallelujah yes a lot of people are getting breakthroughs and they don't even understand that it's a breakthrough because they god don't owe any one of us anything and the things that are happening in our life, we should know by now that it's God answering our prayer. So get your crackers ready and your water. Get your bread, whatever you use, and I'll be back here in two hours. Amen. God bless you, and I will see you. Bye-bye.